uh, set of instructions by hand coding its decisions for systems to learn and improve on its own without much programmer interventions we have to offer machine learning our first time will uh, define machine learning as the study of computer systems that learn and adapt automatically from uh, experience without being explicitly programmed machine learning programs our systems learn by experience we can train a machine by feeding it large amount of data. The machine follows a set of rules called algorithms to analyze and draw uh, inferences from the data. Then comes the another type of AI, AI that is uh, deep learning is a machine learning technique that uses artificial neural network with multiple hidden layers. Artificial neural network is model of the organization of human brain and is interconnected group of uh, artificial neurons that uses a mathematical model or a computational model for information processing. Artificial neural network exhibits as uh, uh, human-like traits as ability to learn from the experience, generalize on their knowledge and make errors and corrections to mention a few. Some applications, some applications of this AI include, uh, you know, actually it is it, actually there are large number, countless number of applications of AI, uh, but uh, some are mentioning here, some are showing here, like uh, the driverless car, Google Translate and image language uh, uh, translations, colorization of black and white images product recommendations, deep dreaming, add sound to the silent movies, automatic video surveillance, pixel restoration, fraud uh, news, healthcare, automated, automatic trend tagging suggestions, mm -hmm. email spam and the malware filtering, virtual assistance, fraud detections, demographic and the election predictions to mention a few. And I also saw here the some of the job roles for the artificial intelligence. And uh, after this, the fourth is the robotic process automation. Uh, robotic process automation, RPA, is a software technology uh, to build, deploy, and many software robots that emulate human actions when they interact with computer and uh, performing uh, rule-based tasks. Uh, software robots can be educated a workflow process with different steps and applications for doing tasks with precision, accuracy, and the speed. Uh, uses for repetitive and time-consuming tasks that are performed on a daily basis, such as sending email, uh, opening attachment, logging into the uh, in uh, interface the applications, moving files or folders, filling forms, scraping data from web pages, extracting structured data uh, from the PDF files are some of the tasks that can be uh, automated using RPA. Some of the uh, RPA tools or vendors are Blue Prism, Automation uh, Anywhere, UI Parts, uh, Work Fusion, Pega Systems, etc. Now, uh, I'm showing here, see, actually, uh, pictures, two pictures showing you the UI part flowchart of the tasks to scrape number of GitHub repositories for the top technologies and some job, role, job, job roles for some of the uh, RPA, you know, uh, jobs given here also. Uh, See, in addition, you know, advanced robots, we're talking about the, this simple uh, uh, RPs, uh, but uh, advanced robots can even perform cognitive processes like interpreting text, engaging in search and the conversations, understanding unstructured data, and applying advanced machine learning models to make complex decisions. And uh, probably the last one is, uh, this is, one is the blockchain. Blockchain is a 
secure, decentralized, and a transparent way of recording sharing data with no need to rely on third-party uh, intermediaries. It is a growing list of records called blogs that are securely linked together using cryptography. Once data is recorded inside a blockchain, it is very difficult to change it. The blockchain is used for secure transferring of items like money, property, contracts, etc., without requiring a third uh, party immediate uh, like bank or uh, uh, government. Now, blockchain, let us see the blockchain architecture. Blockchain architecture. <clears throat> a blockchain is a chain of blocks, chain of blocks with uh, each block in the chain is linked to the previous block. Each block consists of data, uh, has and has of the previous block. Uh, the data contains inside the block depends on the type of the blockchain. Say, for example, a uh, Bitcoin block contains information about the sender, uh, to, uh, then the receiver, and the number of Bitcoins to be transferred. A block also has a hash, which is unique to each block. It identifies the block and all of its uh, contents. So once the block is changed, so you know its hash is also changed. So that makes this uh, architecture very secure. Uh, all the block contains hashes of the previous blocks. Mac, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, all the blocks contains. Uh, hashes of the previous blocks as seen here. Say for example, you know the uh, the first one contains the hash of the second block. The second block contains the hash of the third block, like this. So changing one block can quickly make all the following blocks invalid. Applications. Some applications of the C blockchain includes. Uh, actually, secure transfer of items like money, property, contracts, etc. is uh, just I mentioned. And uh, some of the uh, these things, uh, job roles of the jobs for the blockchain is given here. And uh, finally, this blockchain uh, transaction process I'm sending here. The transact first the uh, transaction is requested, and then the block that. Uh, you know, represents the transaction is created. The third step, the block is sent to the every node in the network. Fourth, nodes, all the nodes in the network validate the transaction. The node receive a reward for the uh, proof of work. The block is added to the existing blocks and then the, thus the transaction is finished. So I think uh, we are actually, I have few more slides also, but however, uh, um, first slide, uh, I mean, few slides on the uh, few, uh, few, you know, uh, emerging technologies. But however, as the, because of the time constraint, I have to uh, come to the end. Uh, the, let us come to the, let me come to the conclusion and the suggestion. Uh, there is, you know, there is absolute necessity to reskill and upskill new technologies to stay re re relevant or for a career in future. The so-called Industry 4.0 technologies are all heroes, are all heroes on their own right, but they can be hybridized at a maximum to get better and a variety of applications. I have some few you know, suggestions for the students, some advice for the students. Uh, that the inquire and the participate various skill development courses on emerging tax of NASCOM, AICT, uh, or some reputed institutions because you cannot go far without having theoretical, solid theoretical foundations. You are encouraged to hybridize the technologies in their, uh, their applications to uh, give more impetus on their pro, uh, products and uh, pro, uh, approaches. For example, try to develop a model for face marks reduction, uh, detection or emotion detection in deep learning. Then think for IoT-based smart a, you know, entry system to allow only the persons with the marks or non-persons to enter the room or premises. 
try to go further deeper for upgrading to more advanced systems by incorporating the security issues to your IoT networks. And finally, read good books, good tutorials, blogs, research papers, and videos to widen your uh, knowledge. <coughs> Here are some references. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you all for attending this presentation. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, 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 Singh, Singh, for, for the nice, the nice and the very, very uh, interesting uh, presentation. Because of time constraint, uh, your other slides could not be shown. So we we are sorry for the inconvenience. Thank you again. Now, our next speaker is Dr. R. K. Imo Tomba Singh, Director, Pandit Dindayal Upadhyay Institute of Agricultural Sciences, Utlau, Vishnupur District, Manipur. And he will be presenting presenting on the topic future technologies for sustainable development practices. So I invite Dr. R. K. Imot Singh for the presentation. Dr. Imobi, please remove the shared screen, PPT screen. Uh. Yeah, I'm removing, sir. Uh, it has been removed, okay. Sari Mutumba, please open your microphone. Please unmute, unmute your microphone. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. At the outset, I would like to thank the uh, master for inviting me to share uh, my knowledge, wisdom, and thoughts on the future technologies of uh, agriculture. Now, I would like to share some of the technologies to be applied in the field of agriculture for sustainable development. Uh, Okay. The topic assigned to me by the master is Future Technologies for Sustainable Development. Uh, first of all, uh, we, we have to reorient ourselves uh, what is agriculture. Since time immemorial, agriculture has been practiced by the human beings by cultivating plants and rearing livestock for our day-to-day -day use. But nowadays, agriculture becomes an industry. And backbone of the country, particularly in India, 60% 60 60 of the population depend on agriculture. Uh, agriculture provides the food security, a source of livelihood, and food for the animals, uh, food for the livestock and it gives ample employment opportunities to the unemployed youths nowadays and the economy development of the country is mostly depend on the contributed by the agriculture so since time immemorial we have 
been cultivating crops rearing livestock but due to the advancement of the agriculture and technologies scientists across the globe rethink different technologies and reinvent apply in the production of fish oil seeds fruits vegetables the leather milk so on so accordingly they have coined different terms like blue, blue revolutions particularly for the development of aquaculture and this blue revolution it was in india it was started during the seven five year plan 1985 and subsequently coffee revolution golden revolution and silver revolution so on so in india different revolution have been applied in different agricultural sectors but nowadays we need the recent science and technologies and to be applied in the production of crops vegetables oil seeds fruits and uh, then uh, livestock so on so let us come to the agricultural scenario of the country 18% of the gdp of the country is contributed by agriculture and 58 to 60% of the agricultural uh, practice is contributed by the our indians so we need to use different latest technologies in agriculture sector in land management and to check the food waste the major changes of the agricultural sector in the globe across the world as well as in india is because of the demographic changes increase in the population so accordingly we have to produce the oil seeds cereals meats milk to feed the growing population of the world so side by side by producing these huge quantities of food grains oil seed eggs meat etc it adversely affect the environment so the main task lying in front of us is to apply the cost effective technologies side by side it doesn't harm the environment and conserve the necessary resources so in this era of 2022 now there are seven promising digital innovation in agricultural sectors first one is software for modern orchard management here weather sensing providing data making it easier for farmers to make decision throughout the season so in this regard so we nowadays we are using the automated weather station with different sensors for measuring the different weather parameters and nowadays yield can be monitored and estimated by automatic uh, software and calculation can be done likewise we can uh, design the farms we can make the tools to do activities in the agricultural sectors and drone technology is one of the ai technologies being applied in agricultural sectors in india and the internet of things in farming uh, to measure the soil weather sensors the soil status and uh, then soil moisture content so on this can be a uh, measure through the digital innovations then start agri uh, smart agriculture machines it, it can be used in harvesting crops transplanting then uh, the, the estimation of quality of the fruits vegetables so on 
then the production of eco-friendly plant products likewise so this digital innovations plays an important role in agricultural sector nowadays the technological impact in agricultural mechanizations nowadays in the western countries and europe and probably in japan and russia the agricultural sector is dominated by the mechanization of farms using the different machines uh, in india in the agriculturally advanced states like punjab haryana and southern states and uh, then the ups they have started using the farm mechanization and uh, used in the plantation harvesting then uh, degrading weeding so on but this particular types of machines cannot be applied in the uh, some developing states like in manipur where the different we have the different soil types as compared to the other parts of the country say in case of manipur we have the clay type of soils in this particular type of soils we cannot apply the heavy machines to plow the fields to harvest the crops and so on for this particular area we we have to develop different machines which can be suited for the particular soil types like clay type of soil so on in the alluvial soils or the loamy soils then in the case of chemical fertilization the, this the, the technology recent technology plays important roles in the uh, fertilization of crops so so the fertification or the the exact precisely we can use the exact quantities of fertilizers without uh, without using the uh, the human manpower with the help of the machines then in the case of hybridization so normally to produce a particular variety we need um, about 8 to 10 years to produce a particular varieties but due to the advancement of the agricultural technologies so hybridization can be done through different uh methods different procedures by using chemicals by using radiations and by 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 in the in the laboratories uh with the help of the uh tissue culture technology and in the case of biotechnology there are different aspects which can be applied for agricultural development in future so nowadays in the agriculture sector biotechnology can be broadly classified into two one is animal biotechnology and another one is plant biotechnology so in the case of animal biotechnology nowadays we are talking about the cloning of animals so uh, it happens in some of the uh, usa and uh, advanced european countries and in india also we have done the cloning of uh, uh, animals so this cloning technologies uh, uh, using the uh, this technology we can develop the clones different clones of uh, rarely and desert fish and animals say particularly in the case of manipur so we are we must fond of taking the uh, this uh, cat uh, catfish like nakra uh, so on and uh, conventional breeding technology is take time and cannot produce the huge quantities of the Uh, fingerlings in this particular area if we apply the biotechnological tools to produce the fingerlings so that large quantities of uh, fingerlings can be produced in a short period of time uh, and and the cost effective procedures so on the in the case of plant biotechnologies now we are talking about the production of the uh, uh, planting materials so in the case of viral disease usually we use the tissue culture techniques to produce the virus free planting materials but not only for virus but we can apply this particular uh, tissue culture technology to produce a huge quantities of planting material in short period of times and moreover by using the gene therapy or transferring the uh, resistant genes to the host plants so we can develop the resistant varieties so till today this uh, particular technology has ample scope and potential in the production of that uh, disease free planting materials uh, for agricultural crops in future and nowadays uh we 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 have been using the different apps 
in agricultural sectors, Krishi, Usha, Krishi, Agri Market, E Farmers, a Pit Squad, and Unit Converter, Ultimate, so on. These apps are being used in, in the country for different aspects, uh, which helps, ultimately helps in the marketing of crops and helps the farmers to get the information to advertise their products and so on. And now come to the uh, one of the important agric uh, agri uh, important uh, technologies, the technologies of the, uh, this era, that the AI technologies, artificial intelligence. This now we are talking about the artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence can use in the crop and soil monitoring system how this can be used in the crops. So, we use, particularly we estimate the crop plants manually. It takes labor, physical labor, and spend huge amounts of money. In this particular area, if we use the artificial technologies, AI technologies, so that we can get the exact information within the short period of time uh, without spending the huge amount of money. Say so in the case of measuring the pace and diseases of the particular plants. So this particular sensors of the AI technologies accurately measure the, uh, the incidence of insect pests and plant disease in the field. In the, uh, they, then they can, they can measure the, the exact percentage of the infestation, disease infestation, or nematode infestation, or disease uh, incidence uh, in a short period of time, which, which is, can be converted into the data, so that we can uh, plan for the disease management. Likewise, the uh, AI technology is being used uh, for spraying of uh, pesticides, which are like that. So in this particular area, nowadays we, we use drone or uh, drone developed under this AI technologies to spray, to cover the larger area in a short period of time with, with the exact quantity of the fertilizer or with the exact quantity of the pesticides to be spread uh, in the power unit area. Then aerial survey and imaging of the particular field crops or uh, animal farms can be done using these AI technologies. Then in future, AI in agriculture, uh, farmers as AI engineers, the, the AI helps us in increasing the efficiency, reduce time, labor and resources, and most probably this is environmental friendly and it is sustainable and it, it gives the real-time monitoring to promote greater health quality of the products. Then expectation of AI for sustainable farming. The benefits of AI in agriculture are indeniable. Nowadays, we are using the AI technology for different, uh, for production of different crops, for, for fertilizers, for uh, then for spraying of pesticides, then uh, nematicide, fungicides, and so on. So AI technology are automatic and programming uh, technologies which can be applied for the production of crops and the uh, farm sectors. And most probably, again, we are talking about the another important technology that is nanotechnology in agriculture. So in the case of nanotechnology, this is, we use the particular uh, chemicals at the molecular level, uh, which reduce the chemical, uh, reduce the cost of the particular chemicals and check the uh, unwanted spraying and nutrient loss and increase the yield. So particularly this nanotechnology, precisely we use in the soil improvement, crop, crop production, then precision farming and crop improvement. So in the case of soil improvement or what the nanotechnology is playing that the application of nutrients required by a particular crop is exactly available to the crop by using the nanotechnologies. So these nanoparticles, uh, 
uh, without using the inert materials in the fertilizers, uh, uh, they directly apply to the soil and it helps in the soil improvement. So likewise in the crop production, it helps in the uh, management of the pests and diseases uh, of the particular crops by using the uh, nanoparticle. So nowadays for nanoparticles, we started using the, some chemicals and at the molecular, molecular, molecular levels and protect the crops from pests and diseases. But this is at the laboratory level and not yet uh, readily available in the market. In the market, in future, so this nanotechnology and nanoparticles are readily available in the market. Then farmer can easily purchase the particular type of the pesticide or particular type of the nematicide, fungicide, and so on uh, at the lower cost. And these particular uh, nanoparticles, nanomolecules, will exactly uh, eliminate the target organisms with little quantity of the pesticides or fungicides without affecting the environment and without uh, giving any residual effect to the crops. Then the advantage of technology in agriculture. So the modern machines control the effect of farms. As we know, they reduce the time consumption and better marketing, exposure of the price, so on and it check the uh, waste materials into sea in water, water and the reduce impact on the ecosystem. And the, there are some other disadvantages being faced by the uh, farmers or the illiterate people while applying the technology in agriculture. So the lack of practical knowledge to farmers for machines handling so that in this particular area, these disadvantages uh, may be overcome by by providing or by catering the, or by imparting the techniques or technology to the farmers about the machines, different types of machines, how to handle, how to use, and the 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 operation procedure should be uh, transferred to the farmer so that this particular uh, disadvantage may be overcome. Then cost of maintenance is high, no doubt. The cost of maintenance of uh, machines is uh, high, but it is largely available in the market or it is available as custom hiring at different locations uh, so that farmers don't need to purchase his, his own uh, equipment so that they can hire from the custom service or from the government sources or from the cooperative societies so that the maintenance cost uh, is negligible and they uh, normally pay the actual uh, amount uh, for using the machines. Uh, as we know, the, most of the farmers are illiterate, so they have to be uh, educated with little knowledge about the operation and procedure of the uh, uh, machines and technologies of the, this era. And uh, at the conclusion of the, my topics, so there are little uh, uh, ample scopes of the uh, new technologies, particularly the artificial intelligence, the nanotechnologies and biotechnologies. Uh, with the improved technologies, we can uh, produce the uh, fruits, vegetables, oil seeds, uh, meat, uh, milk, uh, then uh, eggs, and most probably the crops are free from uh, infestation of the disease and pests. This can be uh, a check by producing and by applying the modern uh, biotechnological tools to produce the disease-free uh, crops plants. So that in this particular area, uh, there is one uh, point to be uh, uh, highlighted here, that the uh, plant itself can be uh, equipped themselves by transferring the resistant genes uh, from other uh, closely related plants so that uh, the uh, plant itself uh, becomes uh, resistant to particular disease and pests. This can be achieved through only by biotechnological procedure. And this, if we 
use the latest technologies in future will save time money and uh, health hazard and there would be no residual effect uh, uh, in soil and in in the plant itself and in the environment and this both farmer consumer and uh, uh, all will be benefited by using the advanced technologies and thereby the economic condition of the country economic condition of the state and uh, most probably the economic condition of the farmers will be uh, upgraded by using the, this particular technology in future. I once again uh, thank you uh, the uh, authorities of the MASTEC for inviting me to share my uh, thoughts, my wisdom uh, of my past experience and the, uh, this wisdom may be used for future generations and this can be utilized for the overall development of the country as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Institute of Agricultural Sciences, Vishnupur District, for your very, very interesting and a nice presentation. Thank you once again, sir. Uh, now, I invite the A. Bubu Singh, Director in Charge, National Institute of Electronics and Information Technology, Nelit Gangtok, Sikkim, for a presentation on the topic, Future Technologies to Make Life Easier and Faster. So, I invite Siri A. Bubu Singh for the presentation. Uh, thank you, sir. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, is my slide visible? Yeah. Okay. Uh, very good morning, everyone. Uh, myself, Amon Bubu Singh, Director in Charge, Nelim Kengtong. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Mastek for inviting me to participate in this video itself. Here, everybody is talking about future technologies, and my topic is future technologies to make life easier and faster. So, before we proceed, my presentation will be slightly in a lighter tone. I'll give only the highlight of the technology that are emerging and which may change the future of our life. So before we begin with, what are the difficulties that we have right now? One of the difficulties that we face may be hunger, another may be lack of resources, maybe water, power, and other, other things. Another difficulty that we face right now is uh, diseases like the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, that is, uh, you know, uh, creating problem worldwide, and maybe war in different part of the world. And finally, another difficulty is in managing the time. We have very short time, hardly some 34 hours. Most of the time are engaged in laborious, monotonous tasks. So, how can future technologies make our life easier? So, that is the topic that I am going to cover. And uh, as uh, in, my, in the previous sessions, uh, expert has talked about various future technologies. So my topic may be a little bit uh, replication of that again. So I'll try to skip as much as possible. Only few topics, apart from uh, you know, uh, the topic that they have covered, are discussed here. Uh, this is not an exhaustive list of technologies, but I feel that this is just my opinion that some of the uh, life-changing technology that I feel will be there in the near future and even in the distant future are these five technologies. Even though other technologies may be coming up in future and some of the current technology also may evolve. So the technology that I focus is AI, that is artificial intelligence, drone technology, nanotechnology, 3D printing and sometimes 4D printing also. And lastly, the augmented reality or virtual reality. So these technologies are, I would say, will bring our life to a movie-like thing, science fiction-like thing. And starting with AI, AI is, uh, both the speaker has talked about, about what is AI and how it is used in various applications. So I'm just repeating, but I'll just skip as much as possible. So, as we know, human intelligence is the intelligence that we human have. So, how about simulating the same in machine? 
so that they are programmed to think like human and mimic their action like human. So that is the area of artificial intelligence and various other applications are there to some of they are used in manufacturing and they are using it, they are used in self-driving cars. So AI knows uh, when to put the brake, when to accelerate, whether the traffic is, uh, you can say, uh, congested, when to slow down and all. So this usually human used to do while driving. Now automated, you know, autopilot driving car are mimicking us and doing the same thing. Smart assistants like the Alexa, Siri, Google, or all these things are having uh, connected to the internet and they make decision based on our requirement. We ask some question, they answer, they become our smart assistant. You can ask any question, and if the answer is available somewhere in the internet, they find it and they give us a solution, even the forecast of weather and all. And maybe AI also using uh, health, like healthcare management. Earlier it was like a reactive kind of thing. When we get ill, there is a symptom, we go to the doctor. Now AI can be used for a proactive healthcare management. That is, before the illness starts, before we fell ill, we can have AI program diagnose our data and predict that we are going to be having such and such kind of risks. So that before the illness strike, we may have some preventive measures. So this is what AI is doing right now. And of course, in financial world, automated financial investment programs are there that can predict whether the market will go up or down. In transport and travel and transport, uh, many people might have used Google Map and all. They predict where the traffic conditions are there and reroute our route to a better, uh, you know, the, the navigation will be easier for us and we reach the destination uh, earlier, right? So such things are available through the help of artificial intelligence. Of course, we really use social media. AI use AI is running in the background of most of this social media and help us in, uh, you know, uh, giving notification on whatever we are planning to do. They suggest help and, you know, make our post more visible to others. Maybe some of the people who are in advertisement and all, they are getting help from AI program to target their audience effectively. So, next technology is the drone. Drone, uh, various set and size are there, but basically these are nothing but unpiloted aircraft. May, there is a unmanned aerial vehicle kind of thing. They are using various things. Nowadays in military also, people are using drone for attack as well as defense. So some of the technology that may be changing in our life in the future are drone, which is right now being used for aerial photography. Before uh, aerial photography was a very costly Task, we need to hire helicopters or some other like a big crane to take a photograph. But now drone are very effective in taking aerial photography. Shipping and delivery, Amazon and other company are using drone for delivery of their goods. Even pizza delivery is there in various places. Mizoram, I heard there is a pan delivery in uh, Mizoram using drone. Drone also used in disaster management because they can they can quickly, uh, rapidly you know uh, go to the uh, you know disaster area and uh, detect or you know survey about the uh, you know people who are affected by the disaster and provide the relief material. So drone has been very useful now and in future also it is going to be better. And just now, uh, Ozai Mu. Motomba has uh, talked about the AI drone and all in precision agriculture. So I'll just skip this part also. But drone is using in agriculture to create more resilient type of crop using uh, you know effective means, right? Disaster rescue is another area where drone is used. Weather forecast also is another where dangerous uh, weather situation drone can be used without harming human. Wildlife monitoring is again another area where drone is effectively used to deter broacher. Law enforcement regularly use uh, police and all use drone for law for maintaining law and order situation. 
And right now, uh, countries use drone for uh, you know uh, for military purposes. Right now, in Russia and Ukraine, but also they are using this. Now the next is nanotechnology. Nanotechnology, you know, uh, is uh, I would say it's a very uh, fascinating uh, science area where the particle, you know, are going to be in a nanoscale, uh, something around one to one hundred nanometers. You know, that is a billion of a meter. It's a very very small. So as uh, my previous speaker also mentioned that they use nanotechnology in agriculture, and it is also used in other areas like medical sciences. We use nanobots to target specific cells in textile, nano uh, technology based uh, spray or polymer may be used for having a stain resistant cloth and various other uh, 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 like wrinkle free, very strong material signs, carbon nanotube are very strong, lighter than steel and very strong. So they can be used for manufacturing different type of uh, uh, materials, right, which are used in construction, sports, and other things, like devices like uh, glucose uh, monitoring system can be developed using, has been developed using nanotechnology that are, you know, needle-free kind of thing, right. Sports materials are very strong when used with nanotechnology. So, uh, nanotechnology again used in environment conservation like membrane uh, for filtration of air as well as water. Now, coming to the next technology, uh, I would like to highlight 3D printing. So, 3D printing, just like the 2D printing, is a printer, but here it is like more like a, you know, it creates a physical object from a digital design. So, therefore, it is an additive manufacturing process where we lay a thin layer of material like a liquid or a powder, uh, plastic, metal, or even cement, and then fusing the layer together to create a physical object. So this has been used in automobiles to create, uh, you know, different type of parts. Rapid prototyping is uh, possible here by using 3D printing. And also uh, in jewelry, women would love to uh, take it out before they buy it. So. 3D printing can print a very complicated design as a prototype and you can see in a physical form. And another is uh, in prosthetic and dentistry, different, uh, you know, a model can be, denture can be made. And uh, as we have different a uniqueness of our teeth, so 3D printing can make it easy to fit in our uh, person to person. So again, finally 3D printing is also Emerging in the area of tissue bioprinting, that is, we are printing organs, living organs. So these are not far where we are going to be, uh, you know, uh, printing maybe uh, a more complicated organs. And this is an example of a 3D printed house. In reality, also many uh, companies, startup companies are here. They are using 3D printers to print print this, uh, you know, livable, sustainable, and, uh, you know, uh, houses with minimum waste. And finally, 3D printing, the technology that is going to revolutionize the restaurant or a food world is 3D food. Now, this is an example of a meat that has been, uh, you know, uh, printed using uh, vegetables uh, component, I would say. So, therefore, this look like the texture, the taste, everything look like a uh, meat. So we have 3D printer that are printing meat, fish, and various other food. So these are not far where, uh, I may be a little bit speculating, where the world hunger problem will be solved. And finally, the last topic, the last technology is the augmented reality and virtual reality. Now, uh, uh, many people may, might have seen the movie Matrix. So that is the ultimate goal of virtual reality where people, people get confused between what is real and what is uh, virtual. So virtual reality will be, you know, uh, you know will be completely immersive uh, in nature such that the real environment 
will be replaced with a simulated one or a computer generated one. Right now, may not be uh, up to the extreme, but still many gadgets have come up to make that as uh, real as possible. Augmented reality is uh, something to do with adding a digital element in the live view. My, uh, many people have played Pokemon Go, so that is one example of augmented reality. This technology find application in various areas such as automobile uh, industry, where uh, you know before the construction or prototyping, virtually we can uh, check the design and see any fault or any rectification before the costly prototyping and production starts. Healthcare also is again another where virtual reality and augmented reality are helping. So just imagine wearing a yeah, virtual reality, uh, you know, Google, where we can see the things in a very bigger way, um, a magnified way, maybe 100 times or 200 times. Uh, so operation and all will be easier. And many people also use virtual reality to practice, just, uh, just like uh, they do in actual thing. They will have the same feeling so that they can learn beforehand. Another example is in retail. Imagine you go to the shopping mall and uh, you know you can check the dresses. For example, how does the dress look like when you are uh, wearing them? So if this can be done in a virtual area or virtual world, that will be you know saving lots of time. So this is again another area, emerging area where virtual reality, virtual real estate, virtual uh, shopping mall are available, where all the goods are available. And you can test it out and you can feel the thing. How does it look like? How does it feel? And all. Not only on the uh, picture format, but you will be in an immersive format. Tourism is again another area where virtual reality is uh, applied. So here again, before uh, because of the COVID lockdown, many people have uh, felt that tourism is down. So now many of the tourism uh, company related uh, company they are offering something like try before you fly kind of thing, where they give you a virtual reality tour before actually going to the tourist area. Real estate is again another where people can finally check and feel how the real estate is like, like a house or a, maybe a building or maybe a landscape before actually going and buying it. Education is uh, another area where virtual reality has immense promises because now students can immerse themselves in the in the area where they are studying, like uh, say outer space, maybe inside the computer or inside the body to learn about the system inside. So virtually they can go inside and check it out. They can go to the edge of the dinosaur and see all the you know living organisms, living living uh, animals out there. So therefore, virtually computer is going to simulate this environment. So therefore, education is one thing that is going to be changed by virtual reality. Arts and design is again another where people not only draw but they can find themselves completely into the virtual world. So this again is another area where uh, uh, which has lots of scopes with this uh, technology. Now, uh, due to the COVID lockdown, many of us are using Zoom and other uh, virtual uh, conferencing facility. Using virtual reality will be a little bit extra. We will feel like we are in the same room kind of thing. Not only the video one, but we will be interacting with them as if we are there. So events, conference, and other meetings can be more immersive when using virtual reality. Social event, again, there are many metaverse where, uh, you know, different virtual world has been created by different company where we can join, we can have our digital avatar, and we can interact with our other friends who are there in the digital avatar. We can go to the movie, we can go to the beach, and we can share our experiences, just like what we do in the real world. We can have a social, you know, uh, activities going on there. Finally, Law enforcement agency also they are using uh, virtual reality to uh, simulate the crime scenes to learn. So it will be much better than just uh, reading or watching a movie. They themselves will be involved in the real crime scenes just to you know get a real feeling of what is going on there. So therefore, virtual reality or virtual reality is going to change the picture world in a way that uh, you know 
we may not expect. So to conclude with, life will be easier and fast. Not only on Earth, maybe we may go abroad, off the Earth, outer space, space tourism, colonization of other planets, robots everywhere, and uh, self-driving cars, flying cars, and finally, hunger-free world, disease-free world, healthy and very long life. These are some of the aspects of the technology can bring us in maybe near future, very near future, I would say. And with this uh, few notes, I'd like to conclude my uh, presentation. I have deliberately eliminated all the disadvantages because I'd like to, uh, you know, for this session, I'd like to make it a, in a, a slightly in a heavier note because technology has two sides. One can be an advantage to us and another can be a disadvantage. So thank you very much for inviting me again uh, for this uh, session. Thank you, thank you. Sir, uh, for the very, very interesting presentation. Thank you once again. Uh, now I would like to invite Dr. Rajiv Rajkumar, Faculty, Computer Science and Engineering, Manipur yes. Institute of Technology, MIT, Imphal, for a presentation on the topic, Future Technologies to Build Atma Nirbhar Bharat. So I invite Dr. Rajiv Rajkumar for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, am I sound audible? Hello? Yes. Yes, am I sound audible? May I? Yeah, yeah, audible. Okay. <clears throat> okay, thank you. So thank you once again for Master for giving me a chance to share some knowledge about uh, uh, Bijan, um, uh, this one under this Admanivan scheme. And I would like, I'd like to quickly go through my topic as we have a time limitation is there. So am I, my slide is that, uh, visible to you all? Yes, yes, it is visible. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. So, so my topic is like a hello brain. So it's a thing like I'm going to communicate with, uh, uh, with the brain to the machine. So how they're going to communicate uh, the brain to the machine, I'm going to elaborate in some simple way. So we have, uh, okay. So here, I think everyone is familiar about a movie called The Matrix. Here the mat in The Matrix, some code, some computer code is inserted or putting in the back of the neck of each person. So it's called with such like a bioport. So Bioport in this movie, they are, they are just looking, they are just putting all the information, like a full access to all the information channel of the brain. So the results use the Bioport to load this new skill to their colleague brain, writing directly to the. So they are going to access directly from the brain to the machine, something like that. So they, these are some science fiction movie, and now this science fiction movie is going to become reality. So here, imagine like this happens reality, reality means all your exam time problems vanishing. Like you'll be able to memorize your whole course book within just a tap of a button. How is it possible? It's very good. So futuristic and science fiction writers are also speculate about the time when brain activity will merge with a computer. So like it's something like AI or machine learning, this kind of, as our previous speakers have already mentioned about the AI also everything. So now I'm going to like a communication between directly from our brain to the machine. How the hardware can be communicated directly from the, uh, from the, from the brain. Actually, nowadays they are doing like a robot from the actuator, from the motor, we can directly uh, communicate or use the hardware. But what if, if I use directly from my brain to control this hardware or machine? So for this purpose, we call this kind of thing is called as a uh, brain machine interface or BMI, how the brain is going to be connected to the hardware directly. So the first thing we have uh, this, uh, the means with the general concept, we can say the definition, like BMI or the or the brain machine interface is nothing is a gen generally we the robot, the interface has sensor and the controller with controller or manually through remote control or joystick. This is how we use to connect, uh, communicate with the machine or we can say the hardware. What if, if you connect directly, 
So this is how the brain machine interface comes. So here the machine are controlled with the brain as an interface. So the name is brain machine interface. So you can easily see in the in the picture in the diagram from the brain itself, it is controlled uh, the hardware. Like we can say, for example, we can control the mouse cursor, or we can see we can see the uh, we can click the button like that. So we can say, have some application where it use. If it is possible, then uh, it can be useful to many area like in the field of medical science or like you paralyze people in the robot, any fields you can use. So actually the brain, the electric brain, we, here I think everyone is familiar about a neural network, a biological neural network. Inside our brain, all the neurons are there. Our brains are filled with neurons. Individual nerve cells are connected to one another by dendrites and axons. So here neurons send signal and these signals are what are generated by by difference in electric potency it means they are they are sending some pulses. So this is how we used to send from our brain to the, our hand, so that they give some kind of information. They control our hand, my leg, everything in the whole structure. It gives electric pulses. How by um how what I mean um, what if if I collect or I, if I scan this kind of uh, collect this pulses through a kind of electrodes. In this electrode, I can capture this old pulses, electric pulses, and I can just communicate with the machine so that I can control all the cursor or any mouse or buttons, everything. This is how we used to do in this uh, machine or brain machine interface. So here, there are different techniques are there for uh, for extracting this kind of signals. Okay, Different neuroimaging methods are used to derive meaningful interpretation from the brain signal which are captured by micro electrodes. So this brain, this one, pulses, we can say, or electric pulses can be captured. There are different methods. So the first one is electroencephalography, electrocortiography. These are different techniques are there. But in, in brain machine interface, usually in our, uh, this one, computer to connect, the first one, it is EEG are normally used. And they are normally, so this electroencephalosis gram EEG is a measure of the brain voltage fluctuation as detected from the scrap electrodes so I can you can see clearly in the, the figure or in the diagram so one electrode is inserted in the brain and in, in this electrode they're going to capture the electric signal which are sending among the neurons inside the brain and by capturing this signal I can just transfer this signal to our machine or you can say hardware and I control I can control or I can do whatever we like to do but what we want to do like uh, like uh, paralyzed uh, hands, we have we can put a paralyzed hand also in a paralyzed hand. We can put this electrode, we can control each and every uh, system or uh, what to say, a hardware. So the first implant, the first implant was done in the University of California. Berkeley has demonstrated how the reduced monkey with electrode implanted in the brain use their thought to com control the computer cursor. So the first implant was done in the monkey itself. So once the animal has mastered in this particular task, they could repeatedly and proficiently day after day. So it reflects a measure finding by the scientists that a monkey brain is available to, to develop a motor memory for controlling a virtual machine in a manner similar to the way it creates as a memory of a animal body. So after this successful uh, this one work, we can directly go to the human being also. So I think they have already done this for the human being implantation. So these are some application which we are using this PMI. The first one, I think everyone is know Stephen Hawking. So this Stephen Hawking also is a physically handicapped and this operate using a BMI wheelchair. It's a directly controlled from this brain. The micro here, you can see in the, uh, uh, in the diagram, there's some microchip is there. In this micro inside, there are some, they have control, they have collected the signals which are sending within the neurons. And with this help, this uh, signal they have captured through this microchip, and we can control this wheel going backward, upward, or going in the straight way, or in the field of robot also. We can go this one in the previous uh, lecture also. Sarbu has also mentioned about augmented rea reality. Even we can control through our mind without using the joystick or without without using a mouse or any kind of hardware. We can directly control through the brain. And in the field of entertainment, also we can we can do gaming. Also, we can we can do the game by 
just uh, controlling from the mind using as a joystick. So these are some application. This uh, BMI is one of the most uh, futuristic technology you can say. There are lots of future technology technologies are there, but one of them I just want to highlight is the, the BMI, that's all for this town war. So these are some uh, medical sciences applications enable disabled people for the vision and hearing, paralysis treatment, prosthetics devices like uh, amputated leg or we can say artificial leg or hands, provide the means of communication to completely paralyzed patient, surgically implant implanted devices as replacement of paralyzed patient. These are very much what's it, uh, useful in the medical science. And now I'm going, I want to highlight one company is there that is called Neuralink. Neuralink is one of the company which is founded, which is founded by Elon Musk. I, I think Elon Musk is what is heard by. Uh, it's uh, the, one of the what is the richest person you can say is a um, game changer for all the world. He has plays a Tesla, he has a sort of Hyperloop, every boring company they have in every field they are just in recently they have he has purchased a Twitter a company also. And for the Neuralink also, he is a co-founder of uh, this Neuralink. Here they are doing kind of research for directly connecting with the uh, brain. So Neuralink Corporation is a neurotechnology and company that develops implanted a brain machine interface that's co-founded by Elon Musk. It was launched in 2016 and first reported in 2017. And Neuralink brain machine interface and the sync, which I have told you, did some electrode into the brain, then use a chip to communicate with a computer outside your skull. So like I have shown in the first slide, you know, in the matrix, you have used some, I want to say, for some cord inside the back of the neck. So this is a similar kind of thing. So Neuralink is the co-founder of Elon Musk has done some kind of research. So Neuralink will set up electrodes which will read those pulses, amplify them, and send them to the machine, which will then work accordingly. This electrode support writing also, which can help in treatment of brainly disorder. You can say, no, with the help of this Neuralink, he can, he can type with the help of this mind from this brain, we can say in the brain. So there are some five steps there for the neural links for the working. First, they are going to create a thread and stitching of thread into the tissue, like in the inserting that code, or we can say is the, uh, in the, inside the brain. So very risky also inside the brain. And reading the signal and cleaning them also. Cleaning means we can have some noise also, and it can be the, the signal may be some very slow, very poor also. We can amplify that also, see. In the, in the next step, they are saying transmission of signal to the amplifier. An application of signal and transmission to the machine. So this is how they used to work the neural link. So these are the threads. It's, it's, it's very big. It's, uh, it's something like four to six micrometer, which is thinner than our human here. And human ear is something about uh, 17 micrometer. And the length of 20 micrometer. These are some threads or ultra thin polymer. It's a flexible polymer, polymer which we use to insert in our brain for, for collecting the electric pulses from the from inside the brain so that we can communicate directly to the to the machine or the hardware and this is the link section uh, is a silted one is an implanted device a process uh, and simulated and transmitted neural signal see so some uh, transmitter also is there inside and next we have a charger even we can charge also where the compact inductive charger wirelessly connected to an implant to charge the battery from the outside so we need to have some kind of port in so we can just put inside the one hour battery, uh, this one charger, and we can charge the, our device. We can say the thread. And, and here, while inserting, okay, it's very sophisticated. So Elon Musk has done some kind of, they have built one robot specifically for design to inserting this kind of thread in our brain. It's very risky. That's why it should be errorless. It should be a very efficient one. So Neuralink has developed a robotic insertion approach for inserting flexible props or that traits, allowing fast and reliable insertion of the large number of traits targeted to avoid vascular and record from dispersal of brain reason. So it is, you know, it do not harm any reason inside the brain because brain is a very complex and a very sensitive area of our body. So we need to be very careful while inserting. So even human will be having some error. So I think they have built a specifically a robot for inserting this kind of a new uh, nanotube, I can say, or a kind of electrodes. Okay, then uh, we have this, uh, they have their own, uh, what to say, an app 
or Android app or is there iOS device, a Neuralink app will allow you to control your IO device, keyboard, and mouse directly with the activity of your brain, just by thinking about it. See, in their app, they're going to control with the help of their chip by using just um, uh, thinking or just by, I'm going to here in this part, see in the diagram, you can see by, by moving this uh, small portion to this green part. So here, uh, they have been in the control, the Neuralink app would guide you through exercise the teach you to control your device and be autonomous with a Bluetooth connection. You would be control any mouse or keyboard or an experience reality unlimited and in high fidelity. So here they, they have their own specific to train to train the, the user for, for using that kind of a thread or that uh, chip, I can say. Okay, here uh, you can see some four videos. Neuralink team has started some three picks. Initially, they have tried research on the three picks. Uh, three picks in 2020 recently uh, to demonstrate the device. The first one they call is a Joyce, and he has no implant. Just checking out the behavior only. The second one is that of second pick is called Dorothy, and Dorothy has, has implanted the uh, chip, and after that they have removed so that they can check after while while implement implanting in the human if the human uh, he didn't want to get uh, this implanted to be removed it means if you don't want what is the reaction what is the uh, what's the behavior of the what to say the human so that's why they are going to check uh, the second pig that is called Dorothy that is implant install and then remove and they, they are still observing the the behavior then the third one is the Gerti Gerti has the implant and monitor neurons in the arts now so they are reading the brain inside the brain activity. So whenever they fit some uh, some what to say some little things, the spike is coming out. They are they they, have, they used to do this kind of uh, work in 2002. So first they have tried in the peak, and this and in the third in the fourth one, this reading brain signal through electrodes. See, they have they have first they have predicted using some machine learning or something like that. They have predicted it and after predicting also, they have a similar kind of pattern which they have, which the, the pig is going to, see, in this picture, the pig is moving right now. And while moving, the first, they have put some electrode on inside, something like that, and they have reading the mic. So the, I think it's very uh, small, I think, so it can't be read, I think. The black part is the actual one, and is the gray part is the predicted one. So in the picture, they have they have get some good result while predicting the answer. So this is how they have done in the 2020 in the pick itself. In the next uh, 2000, in the next year, Elon Musk has done uh, some monkey playing with with pong. I think you have seen. I have known some that game called pong, ping pong. We can say. So in 2001, recently they have tried. They have done this kind of. Uh, let's say uh, uh, testing, or we can say a research on the monkey itself. So this is how we recently they have done, you know, the monkey. So they have done very successfully in the monkey itself. And after this, we have done this in a human implant in 2022. Recently, in 2022, they have done using this. I have just caught courtesy from the Blue Man Quick Cell. In this uh, research, they have they have inserted this electrode. And inside this electrode, they have done kind of research. They have collected the, uh, the, the impulses, which is directly sent from the neurons from the brain. And they try to collect and they try to, uh, what to say, control the hardware or anything, any machine or anything like that. So I think they have done it. You can clearly see the picture in here in the, uh, some in the video also. Deep brain simulation, they have done some kind of uh, electrode based. And in the figures to here, see in the all this citizen, if they have some brain disorder or something like, even he, he can use with these all electrodes, and he, even he can, what to say, he can write with a, while just thinking. He, he can type using one. Uh, see, this guy is a paralyzed people. He's a guy, so he, he uh, is inserted inside. One chip is there, so. I think, and they can, uh, oh, what they say? so these are some uh, pictures getting link, the link, the signals, which are sending from the neurons. See, these are some electrodes. There's some minutes, some, uh, what is it, nanotube, you can see. 
So after after this you can see some uh, some, some clips of that uh, nano chip, the thread of the neural link. It's all for the neural link. Okay. So getting the link first, inserting the link, and this is how we used to do that EEG. I have told, told you know that method to scan or something like that. And human implant. And you can just see one. Uh, I want to show you one last clip. Okay, yeah, that's why I'm just waiting for that one. This clip this is a robot to inserting for the neural link that uh, insertion of that uh, threat to the brain. These are the robots. So I think this whole neural link and this uh, brain human interface will be a game changer for everything so that we can control. So this is a uh, keyword, QT keywords. You can see some uh, uh, symbols, some alphabets are there. You can just directly. Kind of write in the in the in the mouse or in the the computer or in the, the smartphone directly from the keyboard. So there is no need of keyboard or joystick or anything. See, this whole person is just writing from their mind. The slow fell down the soul zone. Like this, is how they used to do. This is taken from G Tech Medical Engineering. Okay. So lastly, I would like to add that the Neuralink, as uh, that Max Alan Max has said, we hope to have this. Is our first human, which will which will be people that have a severe spinal cord injuries like tetraplegics, quadriplegics, next year pending and FDA uh, food and drug uh, approval. So this is the Elon Musk has recently added in, the, in recent and this uh, and lastly we have this uh, Mark has also said that Neuralink working well in monkey and we are actually doing just a lot of testing and just confirming that is very safe and reliable. And the neural link device can be removed safely after doing lots of research. And the last point we can say is the can neural link can be hacked. So it is possible also. Some people can be hacked. This signal can be hacked also. It will vary. The consequence will be very fatal for the victim. But this one we can we can discuss in the, after next um, some topic also. I will not be highlight this much in this uh, lecture. Okay. So these are some conclusions. So this, uh, I can say. It's a, it's a game changer of, uh, of all human beings for the future. If it, is, if it is possible, if it is reality, come to a reality, even all the joystick, keyboard, everything will be extinct, I can say, and will be very useful to our human and mankind. So these are some website references which can, you can refer for further studies or you can further information. And these are some white papers which you can use to learn, read some about this uh, brain-machine uh, interface. And that's all for my topic. Thank you once again for giving me a, a chance to give some information about this future technologies. Uh, Vigyan, sir, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rajiv, for uh, yes. the very, very interesting presentation. <clears throat> thank you once again. Uh, now we have the last presentation on the topic role of fruit crops in economic development with special reference to Northeast India. And the presenter, uh, presentation will be <clears throat> by Dr. Roman Senzam, Senior Assistant Professor, Fruit Science, College of Agriculture, Central Agricultural University, CAU Imphal. So I invite Dr. Roman Senzam for the presentation. Hello, sir. Sir, is this audible? Yes, sir. Dr. Rajiv, please remove your uh, PPT. Okay. 
Yes, yes, it is visible. Uh, sir, my, uh, sir, my role is uh, role of rich prop on economic no. development which tends to Norris India, sir. Sir, thank you, sir, for giving me the opportunity for sharing my experience for the free crop cultivation for Norris India, sir. At present, sir, in Norris India, sir, it is about which is constitute about 8% of the India total geographical India, sir. It composes of about the 50% of about the India biodiversity, sir. And it is one of the most part of biodiversity in India. In India, mainly this Western Ghat and Norris India is been the last part of the Zamplasm conservation has been taking place from these two parts of India, sir. And it has in India, mainly from Norris India, it has tremendous measure and underutilized fruit crop has been growing found in in northeast part of India. The major fruit crop generally sir, this mango, banana, the lot of genetic diversity is there, as well as the citrus fruit crop, and lot of underexploited fruit crop is also being found in this northeast part of India, which have in a lot of scope for the exploitation for the fruit crop for the future. At present, we have this COVID pandemic, sir. At present, this ICMR also recommend about 150 gram fruit and 300 gram of vegetable per day. So nowadays, we are using this the limb C as a source of vitamin C. So nowadays, the people want the organic product. So resource of vitamin C like Gawa, Amla, this Barbados cherry, this as well as the citrus, a lot of people are consuming in this pandemic of COVID. And northeastern part of India, like Manipur, constitute about 90% of its area is about the hill area. So there is a lot of scope for the expansion of the fruit crop cultivation in India as a source of income generation. So I want to share about the contribution about the horticulture in agriculture sector in India. At present, as per the 2020 data, sir, is horticulture contribute about 33% of, of the total contribution in the agriculture sector. Out of this agriculture, this horticulture contribution, fruit and vegetables share nearly 90% of the total horticulture product in our country. And at present, India is the leading in the fruit crops like mango, banana, papaya, cashew nut, erica nut, and vegetable crop like potato and Okra are the leading in the world, and at present, India is the second largest producer of the fruit and vegetable crop after China. So let's see about the share about the area and production about the major fruit crop in India. At present, mango is the leading in India, followed by banana and citrus. 
In the citrus, also mandarin, we call it kamla or gomla. These are the leading in the area in case of India. In case for the production at the present status, banana is leading followed by mango and sweet orange. These are the first, second, third in case for the production contribution in India. There are the different crops like apple, guava, pomegranate, jackfruit, grape, papaya, pineapple, sapota, amla, and lisi. These are the some of the major crops growing in India. In this crop, in northeastern part of India, mainly this, this pineapple, pineapple, citrus, citrus also mainly this pomla or mandarin, this kasai limon, these are the mainly growing in northeastern part of India. And some other crops like this pear, plum, peas, passion fruit, kiwi, and strawberry are also the major fruit crop in India. Among these fruit crop in northeastern part of India, passion fruit, a lot of there is a large cultivation is there in India, like Manipur, Mizoram, Meghalaya. There is a more cultivation is there in India. In case for the kiwi fruit in India, earlier Himachal Pradesh is the largest producer of kiwi fruit in India, but at present status, this Arunachal Pradesh is the leading in the production of kiwi fruit in India. Here I want to share about the production of the fruit crop in India among the different states. At present, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra and Uttar Pradesh, they are ranking in the first, second, third rank in the production share of the fruit crop in India. In this 1 to 10 rank about the fruit production in India, None of the northeastern states are included in the list of the fruit major fruit production in India, which indicates that there is a scope for the improvement for the northeastern state about the production of the fruit crop in India. Although there is a lot of genetic diversity is there, their production and productivity is low as compared to other states of India due to negligence or the improper use of integrated nutrient management as well as the new technology as compared to what the state of India. I want to share about the percentage, share about the production among the different particles of growth contribution. Out of this contribution, vegetable share about the maximum contribution about the production followed by the fruit crop and the plantation crop. In case for the plantation crop in Northeast India, tea, coffee, coconut, cashew nut, these are the major plantation crop growing. At present, cocoa, new crop is being started introduction in the Assam, which is used for the preparation for coffee. This chocolate making, this is been started in Assam. This cashew nut is also started introduction in the Assam, this Meghalaya, mainly in the West Garoville district. And T Assam is the leading at present in case of India also. And in Manipur, in the Jiribam district, it is been growing. Other part of Manipur is not yet been started. Little have been initiated, but not yet for the expansion for the tea cultivation has not been done. So this is the some of the share of the production share of the horticulture crop in India. In this slide, sir, I want to show about the what are the major fruit crop growing in India and what are the potential fruit crop so that which can be earned for the income. Banana, mountain, lime and lemon, sweet orange, pineapple and passion fruit, these are the major fruit crop growing in northeastern part of India. Among this fruit crop, banana is the major fruit crop. Most commonly cultivated varieties are dwarf carabinities, we call it zahazi also, grana nine. In case for Manipur, Maitekai and Sini Sampa, these are the major cultivar growing in Manipur region. Mandarin, we call as Kamla, Kamla in Tripura, Komla in Manipur, Santra in Arunachal, Khasi Mandarin in Meghalaya. Earlier, my student who is working PhD, they have collected the, this plant sample and DNA extracted. We found this Kamla, Santra, Kamla, and Komla. These are the different morphotypes found in the growing, but they are been genetically, they are found to be proved to be the same. And among the lime and lemon in northeastern part, Assam lemon and Kasai lemon, these are the famous lemon growing under the northeastern part of India. 
this cassai limon also got the GI tag from the superficial indication and now it's becoming as a famous product from the Manipur state. In case for the sweet grains, let Valencia and Mosambi, these are the two varieties mainly growing in the northeastern part of India. In case for pineapple, Q and Queen, these are the two variety mainly growing in northeastern part of India. Besides this one, in Assam, Zaltu and the Lakhat, these are the two morpho type. These are the queen type, but different morpho type growing in the Assam region. In case for the passion fruit, in northeastern part of India, purple, yellow, and giant gardenella, these are the three types growing in the northeastern part of India. I want to share some photo about this passion fruit species. Generally, yellow and purple, these are the two type species growing. Newly, this giant gardenella, we call as Manipur as liwar or we call as passion fruit. So, this has been started introduction in the Manipur state also. In different states of Norris, like Assam, as well as in the Arunachal Pradesh, they are selling as a name of the local squash as a source of vegetable when they are in not in the mature stage, but in the young stage, they are using as a source of vegetable. I want to share about the, some of the potential exotic fruit crop in Norris India. Dragon fruit, avocado, these are the newly introduced exotic fruit crop in Norris India. Let's see in case for the Manipur also, dragon fruit and avocado, these are been importing from the Myanmar or the through Moray, it has been importing to India. This dragon fruit has been started to the cultivation in Manipur and it has been growing in the homestead garden also. Bogato is, a, is also a tropical fruit crop. It can be successfully growing under the hot climatic condition like Sotanpur in Manipur. And it is also been started in the homestead garden in the Sotanpur district. Low ceiling apple is also been a scope for in the northeastern state. Anna, Dorset, HMR99, these are the three important variety low ceiling which has been introduced and for the low ceiling variety in the northeastern part of India. I want to say something about this one. Low ceiling means if the temperature is around 4 to 7 degrees Celsius for about one week, then the flowering can be take place as compared to the variety. The variety like golden delicious and all, it will take minimum one month, four to seven degrees Celsius to induce flowering. In case for the Manipur and Delhi region, like those places in the Manipur, like Manipur also, where the temperature is around four to seven degrees Celsius, at least for one week, then flowering can be initiated. So this variety has been successfully introduced in the northern part of India and they started growing. The sea is also earlier, it is not yet been commercially growing, but it has been started exotic for the potential in the northern part, it has been started cultivation. And the low ceiling piece also, Punjab, Sunny Punjab and Prata is a low ceiling apple. This piece, sorry, it has been also started introduction in the northern part of India and started growing. Amla, improved variety like area 6 or Nilam, which is a big size, is also started introduction in Arunachal Pradesh and successfully growing. These are bigger in size, but this NA6 or Nilam is a cross incompatible, is there? That's why self incompatible. That's why if you want to plant this Nilam, we want a male source of pollinator is required, or a local variety should be planted. One by ten ratio, then only the fruiting proper fruit setting can be take place. Lastly, this kiwi is also a potential exotic fruit crop in northeast part of India. Earlier, Himachal Pradesh is the leading in the kiwi production. At present, Arunachal Pradesh, Bomjila site is the largest producer of all the kiwi production in, in India. Here, this photo is been from the Bomjila site of, of Arunachal Pradesh for the cultivation of kiwi. It requires some sloppy region is been required and it requires some cold temperature for around four to seven degrees Celsius for our island just 700 to 800 hour is required. Those places only it can be suitable for the cultivation of this kiwi fruit crop. In Manipur, like Urkul district, Chenapati are the potential for the cultivation of this fruit, fruit crop. 
for the exporting of this fruit crop for the export market also it require around 70 to 100 gram per fruit is the export quality of fruit crop the product which been getting from bontila side of arunachal pradesh is the more than 70 gram per fruit so these are the good quality is been producing from Arunachal, from Northeast India. So it is a scope for the expansion like in Manipur also. There is scope for the for the this expansion of kiwi, kiwi cultivation. I want to share about some of the geographical indication tag fruit crop from Northeast India. Among the fruit crop like Tespur Lisi, earlier Lisi is not a this Lisi bell is not in Norwich, India, now after the introduction of Lisi, Tespur is found to be the suitable for the cultivation of Lisi, and it also got the GI tech of very good quality. Kasi Mandarin of Meghalaya, Kasai Liman of Manipur, Tamil Orange, and Runasal Orange, they have already got their GI tech due to their good quality, and now they are being different step not only from the nor is other state also, they like the GI tech product from our northeastern part of India. Here I want to show some of the GI tech from Manipur. There is a Urkul Kasai Limon, black rice of Sahau, and this Urkul Long Chili, that's a Hite Chili, and Tamil Orange. They already bought the GI tech from Manipur, this four product, which is the, now the export potential from our state of Manipur. I want to share about the diversity of fruit crop in Manipur. In Manipur, there is a lot of diversity about the major and minor fruit crop like citrus, banana, pineapple, jackfruit, mango, avocado, apple, peach, plum, lychee, amla. Extra of the different fruit and major and minor fruit crop are growing in India. All of these things, Tamil, orange, kasai, limon, banana, pineapple, and passion fruit are the major fruit crop growing in growing in the state of Manipur. And exotic fruit crop is a potential. Newly introduced are the kiwi fruit, dragon fruit, and low ceiling apple, and chili and lychee are the potential for the expansion due to their suitable agroclimatic condition in the state of Manipur. I want to share about the, some of the species of the sub-temperate hilly tract of Manipur. This is about the underutilized fruit crop growing. First is called Poor Tangjing. Another is called Hatkora ya Haribo, we call it Haribo. Haribo is an endangered cited species and it is a rare endangered species. In Manipur, it has been found in Manipur in the hilly area. So in the Sandel district, mainly it has been producing from the Sandel district. So there is a scope for the conservation of it. Citron, this Haizang, Citrus medica, it is also rare and endangered citrus species in no other part of India. Crab apple, fig tube, elephant ear fig, this haibung, nogang hai, this haijuka, seri, haimang, haibu, these are the local names which has been found in some temperate region, means it has been elevation above. 12,000 meter of mid sea level, this fruit have been found in the hilly region of Manipur. Some other species like subtropical to the plain region means it has been growing from 400 to 700 meter of mid sea level. This fruit crop has been growing in found in the hilly region of Manipur, like bell, haricago, jackfruit, monkey tree, like haricotong, haricotong. Earlier, it has been found plenty in the plain region also, but now it has been almost nearly to the extinction. It is now mainly found in the hilly state, hilly district of Manipur, like Sotampur. It has also been now to be becoming to the rear in the state of Manipur. Kerambola, this Hainazom, Haigri, Haiyai, Haikru, Hajampet, and Sorkon. These are the local name, and this has been found in the subtropical hill and the plain zone of Manipur. Now I am going to share about the sum of the mild tropical plant to hill zone means it, this fruit have been found to the up to 400 meter above mean sea level in the in the plain and the hill zone of Manipur like Motokai means Burmese graph, Haiyan, Haitroi, Mozang Hai, Haining, 
Haibi, Sileima, Zam and Zam or Zamun or Kiori. These are the some of the fruit crop found in the mild tropical plant to the hill zone of Manipur. I want to share this one Indian pop plum. This tiny in Manipur, there is sweet and as well as sour type is also been found in Manipur. So there is a scope for the potential for the selection of the superior genotype of the sweet genotype of this Indian pop plum or or hining as a source of the genetic resource for some plasm conservation as well as for the improvement of the crop improvement variety for the future. I want to share among the cited species is found in Manipur. There are two rare species, endangered species there. One is one is highly bob or we call a citus macroptera. It's a rare and endangered citus species in the India. This citus macroptera or hairy bob is mainly found in the Mizoram and Meghalaya Garo Hill and in the Manipur state. These three states are being found and in the third state of India, it has been in the rare and endangered. So this crop has been good income, it's been earning one fruit in the off season, rupees 50 in the one season also, we are getting rupees 10 to 20 per fruit as using as a spice. So this is a good scope for the conservation and expansion for the cultivation of this rare and endangered citrus species. Another is the Hijang or Citrus Medica. It is the rare and endangered species among the citrus species found in India. This species is been used for our medical treatment also, like for the for heart disease and all. It is been used in different in Still, like outside Norris India is a good demand. So we need for the conservation as well as for the expansion for the cultivation of these two rare endangered cited species is needed from Manipur, which is found at present. I want to show some other popular underutilized fruit crop. So one is Haibung, we call as this one Grassinia species. This Grassinia species, we Used in Manipur in the Uso or any other festival we are using for making as a as a delicacy. One fruit has been costing rupees fifty to hundred. It depends from time to time, but there is still now there is no proper cultivation is not there. So we need for the conservation and the cultivation for this crop with a high demand in Manipur. One is. Haibala, this is called Ficus palmetta. This is also used as a vegetable, as a resource of urgent source is there. So people like it, but there is no cultivation, proper cultivation is not there. It's been found in the forest region only. Lastly, this is another, this sort one we call as Cylon olive. It has also been growing, but no proper cultivation is not there of this fruit crop also. So, Concern for the fruit crop cultivation in Norris, India. I want to share this some of the concern like availability of this fruit crop, which has been mainly growing in the forest region of India. It's been now rapidly this deforest due to the deforestation as well as the human population expansion as a zoom cultivation. Day by day, this about the this fruit area under the minor fruit crop, as well as the fruit cultivation is been depleting day by day. So as well as there is lack of planting material, good quality planting material for tree crop is not there. We are been importing from the different other states, so we require for the quality planting material production is also required. Next thing is the lack of scientific way of cultivation in Manipur as well as as a whole of the northeastern part of India. We don't use proper nutrient integrated nutrient management. Also, after planting, we just leave it when it has been only for the this. We don't apply proper integrated nutrient management also. Therefore, as per the comparing to the third step, our yield and quality is low. That's why we need about the scientific way of cultivation and its growth technique. The important major question is there. We don't have the different process product about its facility and then process product. They how to make for different underutilized fruit crops. Sterilization is also been required. And fifth thing is the poor shelf life. So there is no cold storage facility is not there in the northern part of India as well as in the Manipur also. 
we don't have the proper cold storage facility. So in order to co conserve the free water for the long period of time, we need the cold storage facility. Last thing is the poor network facility for the marketing from the remote area to the main market is another the main problem for the cultivation for the fruit crop in the northeastern part of India. I want to conclude that this fruit crop cultivation is giving a lot of income generation for the poor farmer in Manipur as well as, as for the entire northeastern part of, of India. And it is a good source of nutrient also. And at, but at present, this we don't we don't have the this proper conservation technique. We have been not doing, and this to the this population explosion day by day. Our land under this fruit crop is been decreasing day by day, and these are also the medicinal value. So in the remote places. They are using as a medicinal purpose also. For example, the star fruit we call as phenazone. They are using as a zonist treatment in the remote, remote village where there is no pharmacy or doctor. Um, doctor liability is poor. So I want to conclude that lastly, that technology intervention, new group improved technology for improvement of yield and quality is needed as well as the conservation is needed for the future for this important fruit crop, which are the source of income generation for the northeastern region as well as Manipur. Thank you. I want to thank this master for giving me the opportunity for sharing my knowledge for about the fruit cultivation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Roman, for the nice presentation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, with that, we have come to the end of the began Usaf organized as a part of Azadi Kamrit Masha for May 2022. Uh, so on behalf of the host organization, Manipur Science and Technology Council, Master Imphal, I would like to express my sincere thanks to the SSTP team of DST Government of India, particularly Dr. Dev Priyadatta, Dr. Rasmi Sharma, and Mr. Ravikant Prasadapati for giving us the chance to host this Vigyan Usaf as a part of Ajadi Kamit Mahasap for May 2022. Uh, many thanks are also due to our esteemed speakers today for sharing times. I also express my sincere thanks to all the participants from all over the country for joining this program. I also extend my sincere thanks to the director Master for his guidance in this weekend. Last but not the least, I would like to thank all who have directly or indirectly in hosting this program. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.